all right guys good morning welcome back so now in today's video i want to show us how to make a, to a top um the reason i'm showing all these things is for us to see or draw inspirations from something similar now um, this is my double flap so at the end of this video you'll be able to know how to do a double flap right and um, then the most important thing here is um, knowing how to play with your stripes with your check rather now if you notice we have a checked fabric here and this is a flap and then this flap the measurement i use for this flap is um three inches width by the length of your choice so i will get my tape and show you the measurement so so now um the measurement i have here is um three inches width by the length of your choice right so i have 19 here 19 inches length but then i will not make use of the whole 19 i will still need to um, remove or cut out some parts as we progress right so now, having known that, um, this flap will be two. It will be two pieces, the same measurement, the same length. Then I will cut out additional material underneath, one inch width and then same length. I will also show you when we get to this stage. I'm explaining how these things were made prior to the sewing video, right? Now, I have here with me the piping for the neckline. Now, I used 2.5 to cut this because I wanted to have a border stripes or a border effect coming out above that strand um, piping so the check will show properly on the um, neckline right so this is for the piping the width and the folding i believe you must have known how these things are being cut and folded by now and then um, i have here with me the back piece the back block which is the normal black back block we have and as well the gumming sections the, the right side of the back will be gummed right and then i have here with me the sleeve now this sleeve is kind of a three quarter sleeve it will have a turn up on the uh at the down part of the sleeve so um let me bring out the components of the turn up and show you as well so right here this is the sleeve now the full length of the sleeve i have is um the sleeve full length is um 16 and a half 16.5 right so now I cut out additional material. Now the width of this is um, from here is um, six inches. Now the, this turn up would be positioned in this form. Like if you have your sleeve in this form this way, right? Now it will be turned up in this form this way, right? It will be turned up in this form this way. So now the reason of showing you this is for you to be fully aware of how these things we are cut and then it will as it will as well gummed with your cloth gum or your material gum and then the, the top edge is folded by one inch or thereabouts and then the turn up should not be straight or it must not be straight it can be straight it can be a bit slanted however you want to do it is solely your choice but the finishing i have for the turn up from here to this point is six inches at the center fold and then i have here to be at point um four inches right at the edge closing so this is for the slip turn up is is two piece so we're gonna so see how the sewing is done in the sewing video now as well uh, like i said i have the i have the um, back facing now in cutting the back facing or the back block now the one of the tricks you will use to make your work to look outstanding is to make sure if you notice this um check is going in an in an appropriate manner right it's going in an appropriate manner but then you're not going to return the same nature of the back of the back piece on the facing you are meant to invert it meaning making sure that it's going in a slanted or in a sloppy way to make it to look fanciful at the back as you can see how the stripe the the, the check is moving how this was cut the material was folded in a diagonal form and then to make sure you achieve this um, effect at the back facing, that is the sense of this, right? This is the back facing, this is how it will be, right, after the back facing. So then, the same thing is applicable on the front piece. The front piece was cut in a, in, in a proper manner, the way it is, right? And then, the, the front facing is being cut in a diagonal form as well. Now, the only effect is just to have this um, chair coming in a slanted form this way and then the design of the front facing is solely your choice 
Now, you must not do it this way, but then this is how mine was done. Bear in mind that this is going to have a facing and as well as going to have a piping. So by the end of this video, if you watch the next video that will come up, which is the sewing video, you should see how this cloth was sewn. I'm just explaining how the cutting we are made and then you fold the edges this way. Before then, you must have gummed with material gum and then fold half an inch or thereabouts at the damp part of the outfit. Now I have the pocket. Now the pocket as well was cut in a slanted form, so as well give you that same slanting effect and nature, right? And then this is just a fancy that I might decide to put on the pocket this way or this way as the case may be. And then the measurements of this pocket, the width is um, 5.5, now the depth is um, 8 inches. Now these measurements varies in accordance to your customer's chest measurement and size and then you, sh you, you, um, you should know that you should not apply or use a small pocket for a big person neither are you going to use a big pocket for a smaller chest measurement the chest measurement i have here is a chest line of 44 and above so you might do it 6 or 5.5 or 7 depending on your customer's choice and size all this is i'm telling you is applicable only on adults when you have a female or sorry a, a, a boy or a small boy's outfit you tend to reduce or to um um, um, um compress your measurements so thank you guys so the next video you see now will be a video on how to sew all these components all right guys so now i want to start sewing and then um, like i said i might decide to put this in either way either i place it this way and sew right either i place it this way and sew or then i might place on the body of the outfit and sew so that this will serve as a lock and then i will now um, place button here however you want to do it it's solely your choice but then look at how I, I'm gonna do mine because of the fact that this was hemmed so I will just run a fanciful thread half quarter inch away all through so this will this now will be, will be folded inwards this way so before I fold this I, I usually like to um, have a nice finish in here so I'll place it this way right at the edge of the pocket and then I will sew this way inwards this way right so just sew this way so that by the time you fling it over it you have concealed the rough edge at the um inner seam bear in mind that the m is just to have a perfect or a neat finishing on daily basis you should be working on how to achieve a nice finishing right that's just the, the sew m of all these things i'm doing then you are meant to bring it out and then fold it on top this way and then this will now cover the line you must have sewn from that angle, right? So you have to keep it this way now. And then I'm going to stitch, like I said, half inch or thereabouts away from the um, edge. So from here now, I will sew from here, this way. I will put a button here. So it serves as an illusion lock for the outfit, right? So this will serve as an illusion lock for the outfit. I will also um, show you how or show you the results at the end of the sewing. So you might decide to sew it outrightly or you might decide to end it wherever the first one ended is solely your choice. So let me just sew it outrightly to make sure it gives me a better result. So I will just end this as well, outrightly. Be in mind that um, you might decide to um, create your own design, but then it, it doesn't mean that what I'm showing you must be what you, you will do. It's just an inspiration for you to know how something similar like this can always be achieved, right? So this is just a fancy placed at the pocket edge and then and pocket side. And then I will now um, cut out any thread coming from these directions make sure your threads are properly cut right then I will get a fancy button um, and then place at this point it's just for you to see how this is do was done and then you might as well decide to stop stitch at the edge again it's all your decision whatever you're gonna do make sure you have a reason for doing that right so you just sew from here as well for proper effects or results 
So now, at the end of it all, you see how it's been placed. Now, I didn't want this to stand on its own. I want it to, to be permanently held on the bodies of the pocket. I will do this on the other one and show you the results. Alright guys, so now I'm done with the both pockets, so I'll put both in here and then as well we progress to the other part of the sewing. Alright guys, so now um, we are going to do the um, front facing and everything. Then don't forget that this is the right front, the shiny part, right? And then this other part is the wrong side. So you are going to um, consider the fact that you are piping your neck. So there will be no need to seal the neck. You're only meant to slit, right? So you turn it inwards from the wrong side. Take your facing. Place the right side to the wrong side inwards as well. Make sure that the center lines are corresponding to the center line. The one you, you folded while gumming. It's very important as well. So once you have gotten to this point, you make sure you, the neck are equal. Then you measure from the neck measurement you measure here to be um, six inches right six inches so you measure six inches from here six inches right this is the least you can mark on on kids you mark five please on kids you mark five whether newborn baby or six months old baby any age mark five on kids then you make sure the lines are corresponding to, um, to the one here and then you start sewing then make sure you don't exceed the point you marked and then you move your machine needle two or three movements at that end and then you come up again Please make sure you don't exceed two or three movements. You come up again. Then you have successfully sewn um, your placket threads for the slitting. And then for some of all that might want to know how many inch is this. Now, the width wasn't up to half. It's something like 0 0.3 or 0 0.25 there about. That's one one quarter, right? Now that's one quarter sorry one quarter then the length is must be six for all grown-ups then after you must have done that you slit from here slit this slitting must be done at the center you slit properly notch it out this way notch it out this way and then you f you you now push the back face, the front face, sorry, the, the facing that was inside, push it outrightly to the front this way. Push it outrightly to the front this way. Then, when, once your mother pushed it to this point, now the next you will do is to go and iron it outrightly. Iron, make sure it's properly ironed, and then make sure you balance the center slit, right? Then, once you have done that, all you need to do next is to hold the neckline this way hold it this way and then you stop stitch from the neck the reason to, for doing this is to make sure that the neck and the front facing turns out to be a one piece right so that it will be easy while you want to pipe so you stop stitch from here make sure you sew tip to tip right so that by the time you make your piping your piping will cover the first line you have sewn then you also make sure you balance it outrightly make sure that the edges are properly balanced now the side the center slit must be even it should not come in front nor go towards the back it should be even this way now you stretch it out from the under while you sew from the shoulder you are just going to top stitch from the shoulder point the reason is for you to make sure that the front facing and the front piece are now one piece of material so that it won't be bulky for you to control then you stitch at the armhole area as well right make sure you do this gently 
Now, the reason I'm trying to explain all these things for us should in case we have a newbie amongst us that is yet or this is the first time you're watching my coupling video on Senator Top, please, um, that's why I'm trying to explain for you. For those of us that have been already following me for years, that must have passed this stage, there's still nothing wrong for you to just watch again. Should in case there are some things you do on your own by assumption, so you get to know the rightful way of doing it right. So you stop stitch the tip. Now the tip to tip sewing of this facing is the beauty of the facing, right? Now, if you are new to the um, YouTube channel, please kindly subscribe. Click on the red button on your right hand side down subscribe to the channel subscription is free it's not charged the reason for you to subscribe is for you to be fully aware when next i post videos so that you will get a notification on your email on your phone that i have posted a new video so you can come back and watch if you are a returning subscriber you're always welcome feel free to drop your comments on the comment sections uh, let me know if there's anything I need to work on or, or um, make video on for you to learn faster. Then make sure the facings are properly relaxed and then you bring it down this way and then you sew. All your sewings must be tip to tip, right? It must be tip to tip. Then when you get to this stage, you make sure you... Um, Hold it properly this way, then sew on the tip. Sew it tip to tip, right? Sew it tip to tip, and then relax your facings and everything, and then you sew. Take your time to do this as well, right? So you continue from here. Take your time. So the tip to tip of this and then still make sure you get this area properly sewn and then so from here and then when you get to this stage you make sure as well you replicate the same thing by locking the neck region of your fabric right lock the neck area then once you have finished doing this you cut off your threads now the next thing we are going to battle with now is to put the flap of this outfit right then you might decide to give it a second stitch now this second stitch is a decorative stitch that will give your outfit a more um, detailed looks or appearance make sure that your lines your hands are straight enough now the guideline i'm using to sew this now is that i am lapping the old line at the edge of the footer while i make a new sewing right so the old line serves me as a rule i'm using to sew in a curvy form as the facing curves I was folded so this um, this is how I'm, I'm sewing I'm doing it I'm making sure that the edges here are properly sewn and it must come in this form all these things must be you must take note of them while you sew You must take note of them while you sew. So take your time to do this. And then, once you are able to get to this point, then the next thing you will do now is to um, start building your facing. You saw your flap, right? You see how fine it is? Now, this fabric doesn't need much design, master combination or whatsoever. The only thing you need to work here is to use the stripes or the um, check to formulate all, the, all of this, right? So we are going to take our time as well to 
do the flap now and then we i'll also show you how the flap was done like i said this flap was cut at um, three inches width for the um, bigger strand and then i will bring a blue fabric it can be the same fabric white or whatsoever color you have or you want then place it underneath this way and place this other one underneath this way now the color might come out so if you want to use white whatsoever you want to use i want mine to retain the same nature of um, fabric right i don't want extra material attached to this so um i'm using the same um, i'm using a, a blue material here so that it will also look like the same fabric but then the beauty will be when you use white um or new color again and then you do it this way then before that you top stitch at the edge at the tip of this flap you top stitch the tip this way sew it tip to tip so accurately from here sew the tip then also fix this in inwards as well you sew the tip as well Now, once you must have finished sewing the tip, you now cut off your thread as well. And then, bring whatsoever material you want to use as the underneath one, place it on top this way. Place on top this way. And then, make sure it's centralized. Then you use the old line as a guideline to get another sewing this way. This sewing now should be one quarter or half an inch at maximum, right? One quarter or half an inch maximum. Then once you must have finished doing this, you cut your thread as well. Cut your thread as well. Then you also take this as well. And then place now at this point you now decide if you want the material under to show or if you are just going to close it outrightly and have it to give you this nature here so however you want to do it but bear in mind that if you want to make it to show it should it should be coming out at as small as possible now this line will come out so small the smaller the line the more fanciful or beautiful it is right so you must make sure that whatever be your decisions, you have to make it to look nice. Then I don't want mine to show. I want mine to be properly locked or closed. So I'm going to lap it over this way. And then I will sew from here. Now, the only thing here is that I try to match the stripes. I try my best to match the stripes while I was cutting this. So if you can still do it that way, there's still no problem. But if you can't do it, there's still no problem. Just make sure you give it a nice sewing or a nice stitch. Then once you are done with this, this is how it will come out. This is the result, right? This is the result. So you're not meant to cut out the underneath um, excess of the material you added cut it out so that it should not be too thick while you're trying to fold cut it out from here also cut from here then after you must have done this now the next thing you do is use you fold now this folding will be done with iron so you now fold to your desired size of your flap this way right you fold to your size so i will fold now and come back and show the results all right so now um, i'm done with the flap i have folded the flap this way the finishing of the flap measurement is um, 1.6 right 1.6 then the length is your choice like i said now you must have weaved one edge and then use hemming gum i use hemming gum to hold them together this way right so the part you weave should face towards your direction when you are trying to 
attach this to the material then you make sure you bring these two pieces together bring these two pieces together and take the flap to position at the center fold this way right and then you start sewing you stitch from here you start sewing and then once you have gotten to this stage you bring it together these two slits together make the flap to be at the center at the center of the slit and then you start stitching make sure it's tip to tip right make sure it's tip to tip it must be tip to tip must be tip to tip this way and then you decide where you want the length to stop you might decide to make the length to stop one inch before after the facing or one and a half or whatsoever so I, i'm cutting from here this way and then you cut the under slits this under slit you are cutting is to make sure that it's easy for it to fold while you're trying to fold right cut off the under slits cut off the under slit measurement and then you fold this in v-shaped form it's best folded in v right i like it whenever it's folded in v it gives you a smart look of finishing right and then you start from here and stitch you start from here and stitch start from here and stitch and then you make sure everything is properly arranged now properly arranged then you hold the flap this way you stretch out the fabric to make sure there is no excesses at the upside before you start stitching the damp part of the flap you stitch from here you also stitch from here as well then make sure everything is properly taken care of right make sure everything is properly taken care of then you decide where you want this to end it should be seven inches or eight right you give it one inch extra so that it will be able to open properly for your customer to, or your client to fuck in his neck or to bring out his neck then you end it at that point and then after this now the next you will do is the um, back facing attachment and then subsequently you do the sleeve so at this point you bring your back piece the back piece then um, if you have a label you put your label now if you don't have a label you might decide to get the natural label in the market that just doesn't have anybody fashion name on it you can have in a, a random name on it then the label placement will be two inches to three inches down from the neck fold the label into two equal parts this way and then you place it two inches to three inches down at the center line of the back piece then you start stitching then when you stitch you have to stitch the label all around the reason of doing this is to make sure that the label doesn't discomfort your customer while he puts it on you're done with the label fixing you cut off your threads and then after that let's now join the shoulder now watch attentively now you know we are piping right so you you are going to take the front piece the back piece facing up the wrong side of the back piece facing up then take the front piece place it on top this way place it on, on top this way and then take the back facing take the back facing 
and place for the front of the back to the front of to the right side of the front this way hold the three pieces together at the shoulder here hold the three pieces together at the shoulder here and then you hold the piece these two together then where you make sure they are evenly held then you stitch half an inch half an inch from the neck area half an inch out through from here half an inch out through from this point half an inch out through to the end of it cut your thread as well and then repeat the same thing on the other side holding the three pieces together this way and then you stitch it from here all through half an inch as well make sure that, that the three pieces have been held evenly right stitch all through and after you must have stitched all through here the next thing you will do now is you cut off a bit of this so that the piping will be easy to fold or to use then you cut here as well you cut, cut here as well then you make sure that you push the facing that was in front to the back right push it to the back now and then you cross take your neck measurements now before you lock your back facing you have to decide if you are to um if you are to retrieve the neck or take care of the neck right but then um, because of the fact that I have already known that once you have cut your neck act, um, correctly and joined half an inch, the neck falls into the uh, calculated measurement. But then there's still some need, or there'll be a need to trim the neck at the edge, as the case may be. So now, after you must have done that, you um, start locking the back facing to the back piece. Make sure you stretch it out evenly make sure it's properly stretched out this way and please don't um, uh, allow any air or any form of front pose to be under or on top right make sure it's properly um, stretched out this way and then once it's properly stretched out you start stitching at the tip you start sewing at the tip then once you start sewing at the tip you make sure that the back facing is corresponding with the back line the back facing here the boat must correspond right and then you stitch as well then once you stitch to this point it's a v-shape facing you also raise your footer up as well give it a same V shape sewing now once you have done this make sure you relax the underneath material and the fabric um, the facing on top then stitch nicely as well make sure everything is properly taken care of please very very important make sure everything is properly taken care of very very important you stitch right take your time to arrange your shoulder area and stick to make sure there is no rumples or excesses underneath your fabric then once you are done with this the next thing you will do now is you go and iron out your shoulder area you iron it out this way it's best ironed then you can still top stick the shoulder if you want and then you cross check your neck measurement and then trim it to the size of your neck and then trim your armhole before you start fixing your piping and your sleeves 
I will go and do this now and come back and show us the result. Alright guys, so now I'm done trimming the neck and um, the armhole as well. So the next thing we are going to do now <laughs> is to pipe the neck and then work on the shoulders and the sleeves, right? Alright guys, so now let's um, pipe the neck. Like you know, we have to open up the piping in this form and then if you like, you can use your um, iron to fold here this way make sure the edges is properly relaxed so i will fold and show you the result all right so now let's pipe our neck and then here we have our bias already folded with iron and then you make sure that this bias is properly tucked in here and then you fold in this form you fold in this form and then once you have folded you also make sure that um your edges are properly taken care of right so you pin from the edge you can use a screw or anything to tuck in any excesses coming out now is to make it to, to enable you achieve a perfect finishing at that end then you make sure you tuck in properly from that edge and then you top stitch right so you start sewing then you take your time to hold it properly while you tuck in your fabric this way and then you start sewing very very important as well don't take don't um don't uh, make don't uh, allow your neckline to be tucked in halfway make sure it's tucked in to the extreme then if you notice you have any protrusion at the back neck you can just cut it out to make sure here should be straight or curvy a bit and then you sew gradually so when you get to the edge of the piping you fold it as well the same way you folded the beginning right so you stitch then you can decide to stitch um, um, twice or once however the case be so let me top stitch the second one and show you the result at the end of the video. Alright, so now I'm done piping the neck and then I have ironed. After piping, you make sure you iron. While ironing, place the fabric on top and sprinkle water and then iron flat so that the neck will relax in this form, right? As you can see how the neck is relaxing. So and this is how your piping should look like. So now let's do the sleeve and then um, join it and then that will be the end of the video. Then you, are, you and I know that the sleeve turn up is not a hard one. I have done this initially on my previous videos you can go to the channel and check how this sleeve turn up was done right so that we don't need to repeat this on this video it will make it to be too lengthy and boring to watch so watch the video on the channel of how to do a sleeve turn up so thank you guys for watching